we were going to see some really bad times in the market. And ultimately, there are three things that have to happen or that are going to happen. We're going to see higher inflation or, or at least persistent inflation that's not going to go anywhere. And that's going to continue to erode people's purchasing power because inflation is going up higher than wages. Wage growth is going. And then we're going to see the federal uh, meeting minutes, the Federal Reserve meeting minutes with Jerome Powell. That's going to be Wednesday this week. And, you know, when you look at when you look, look at the Fed and what they're having to do here, they're caught between a rock and a hard place. They either have to fight full employment or they have to fight inflation. And ultimately, when it comes down to that, for now, they're going to fight inflation. At the end of the day, I think they're going to wind up having to retrace uh, because that increased interest rate environment is going to put more stress on the Treasury, right, which is which is the U.S. Treasury, which is ultimately what is going to need money. And and. They're going to have to support that because higher interest rates is going to put more pressure there as well. Hey, what's going on, cash flow hackers? It's Chris with Life 180. And in this video, we're going to be talking about the five things that you need to be doing to prepare for the recession that, quite frankly, we are already in. Uh, that ultimately we're going to be probably seeing confirmed next month. Now, uh, before getting into that, I just want to take a moment to, to look around. I am filming this video right now, June 13th. Uh, in 2022, and I'm it probably is going to hit and release later this week. But the bottom line is today, the stock market's down again. I did a video last week saying we were in for this, uh, that we were going to see some really bad times in the market. And ultimately, there are three things that have to happen or that are going to happen. We're going to see higher inflation or, or at least persistent inflation that's not going to go anywhere. And that's going to continue to erode people's purchasing power because inflation is going up higher than wages wage growth is going and then we're going to see the federal uh meeting minutes the federal reserve meeting minutes with jerome powell that's going to be wednesday this week and you know when you look at when you look at the fed and what they're having to do here they're caught between a rock and a hard place they either have to fight full employment or they have to fight inflation and ultimately when it comes down to that for now they're going to fight inflation at the end of the day, I think they're going to wind up having to retrace uh, because that increased interest rate environment is going to put more stress on the Treasury, right, which is which is the U.S. Treasury, which is ultimately what is going to need money. And and they're going to have to support that because higher interest rates is going to put more pressure there as well. And so that's a thing. And then ultimately, the most important component to the economy is consumer sentiment, it's consumer confidence. Right. And when you look at where we are. I think a lot of people are starting to feel and kind of look around and be like, ah, I'm not sure what's going on. It The market comes down and it bounces or at least levels off. And we've seen that it's been up high and then it's kind of gone down and people have been worried it was going to go through the floor. Then it kind of plateaus. It comes up a little bit and plateaus and, and then it goes down a little bit more and comes back up and plateaus. And we've been on this for a couple months now. And when you look at this since April, this is kind of what's been happening. And now at the end of June, at the end of the second quarter, we're going to officially, I believe, be in a recession. And when that is announced and people start to realize this is this is not good, um, they're not going to have confidence that the market is going to build back or even hold. And so what I want to do, I'm always thinking like a chess player. we got to be thinking a couple moves ahead of, ahead of what's going on in the world, right? And so these are the things that I think every single person should be doing, should be thinking about right now. And um, it'll put you in a better position to be able to thrive and prosper when the recession happens. Now, I'm not a doomsday guy. I'm not a, a believer that this is the end of the world, that, that the currency is going to be completely doomed, even though there are components of that that I think everybody should be hedged a little bit against the devaluation of the U.S. dollar. But I don't think you want to be all in on that strategy, because if you are and you're wrong, you're going to lose a lot. Right. Like so you got to kind of think logically about this stuff. So. That is that. So let's get into this. So the first thing that you need to do is you need to eliminate your toxic debt. Um, consumer debt is at an all-time high right now. And the credit card debt, car debt, high interest rate debt, personal loans, anything that you have that is a liability, if you can sell it and get out from under it, listen, even a lot of things that people have uh, if, uh, are, you know, for cars and RVs and stuff of that nature, you can get out of this stuff right now while, while um, you know, the economy is still at least perceived to be a little healthier than it really is, right? And not to mention a lot of people because of 
uh, auto inflation, a lot of people are going to be able to get out of their cars or if they have a second car or something of that nature, get out of that while you can. Um, if you have to work a side hustle right now and go drive Uber, even though gas prices are out of control, um, I know the mileage deduction rate just went up for the second half of uh, 2022 here. So there's going to be big deductions there that will help. Um, and I think Uber and Lyft, at least I hope, I, I heard this, I, I can't confirm this, but go check. My guess is they're going to be paying a little bit more to make up for it. Or if not, what I've seen, and I have seen this in, in my travels recently, is that there's less drivers available because I think a lot of drivers are just staying home. And so if you understand how the surges work and all that stuff, you know, it's all supply and demand. And so it's a kind of a side hustle. Everybody has the ability to control their own income in this market, in this environment. And so working hard and, and that hustle over the next couple months is going to be extremely beneficial. I would take that and I would pay down all all consumer debt and get your credit built back up and, and make sure that you are in a good position to be able to prosper and take advantage of opportunity when it comes. That is the first thing that every single person needs to do. It's more imperative now than ever, and that is eliminate your toxic debt. Now, the second thing that you need to do is just save up cash. Get savings built up. Make sure you're saving for that rainy day. Make sure you're saving for the opportunities because both are coming, right? I'm not sure where you are in your life, what your job looks like, what um, you know your status of employment and the stability of your job is, but I do know that nobody is completely bulletproof or very few people are bulletproof and, and insulated against a potential uh, downturn that we're gonna see in the economy. And so you wanna make sure that you are saved up, that you have put the money aside and you have a rainy day fund put together, uh, that you have an opportunity fund to get put together. I did a video called the Life 180 Pyramid and it talks about the importance of financial structure and why it is so vital. You having your money saved, this, the unfortunate part is most Americans have most of their savings, quote unquote, inside of investment accounts. And the problem with having your money in investment accounts for savings is that you don't have enough money liquid, accessible, and controllable for emergencies, for opportunity. And so your savings is all held in a 401k or an IRA, and you put yourself in a position uh, where you could potentially need to tap into a negatively performing asset, meaning your account goes down, you lose your job, you need to liquidate your 401k, you pay taxes and penalty, and you're gonna be doing all of this while it's negatively performing and down 20 to 30% at best where it is right now, right? And my guess is, you know, I had Harry Dent on the channel a couple of weeks ago. He thinks that we're in for a 40% decline by the end of July. Now, I think that's a bit, uh, I thought at least it was a bit aggressive, um, but seeing how things are going now, I could see it happening. I'm not saying it's gonna happen that fast. Um, I would say a 40% decline by the middle of next year um, and, and kind of sustaining and slowly getting there is a, a more realistic scenario, but regardless, it's not good, right? It, it's, it's a really rough, rough situation. And so the second thing that you want to make sure that you're doing is you save up enough cash and you have it there just in case of an emergency and opportunity. The third thing that you want to do is you want to make sure that you allocate your money safely. Now, unfortunately, if you're just seeing this video for the first time from me, I've been talking about this for months now, is talking about getting your money to safety because of what is coming down the pipeline. I've told people, listen, crypto is going to get smashed. The markets are going to get smashed. You cannot have the monetary policy that we've had over the past couple of years and think we're going to get out of this without any pain. It's kind of like a heroin addict going on this heroin binge and thinking that they're going to detox from the heroin without going through massive withdrawals. And you can't pump nine trillion dollars into the economy and then stop and then start pulling money back and have all this building up of stuff with with literally no no extra production all the time having a lack or a reduced amount of production and thinking that it's not going to have an impact on everything it's going to have an impact on things and we knew this was going to happen it didn't take a genius to figure out what is happening here and a lot of people are feeling like a lot of these markets, like the real estate market, are completely insulated. I got news for you. They're not. Um, I think real estate is going to be one of the most durable assets. I think it is going to come down. I think it's going to come down relatively less compared to all these other assets. And there's a lot of reasons for that, supply and demand being the main one. But the bottom line is that 
in this environment, you need to move your money to safety because this is we are not at the bottom yet, I don't think. Now, you have to figure out what is right for you. I don't want to be some fear monger telling you just to sell because the market's going to tank and, and you know it's 2008 all over again and whatnot. You need to make sure that you do the research for yourself, that you understand this stuff. I'm a, this is why I'm, I, I'm a huge proponent and, and I always coach people to never invest in something that you don't understand. And unfortunately, most people's money is in assets and investments that they don't understand. And that is why we have such human error, so much human error that goes into uh, investment mistakes, you know, when it comes to these environments. And so what I would say is make sure your money is moved safe. Unfortunately, if you're just seeing me for the first time, uh, you, you missed a couple months ago when I would have said that and you would have been way better served at that point in time. But I still, if don't think that you're at the bottom yet, once again, do your research, figure it out, figure out what your risk tolerance is and go from there. So once you do that and you have all these things in place, the fourth thing that you need to do is you need to just be patient, right? That's really, really hard to be emotionally patient in an environment where there's so much volatility that it goes up really fast, it comes down really fast. There's a lot of emotion, there's a lot of opinions, myself included, I got a lot of opinions on this, right? So I'm not saying just follow people like me or people on MSNBC or Fox News or CNN or any of these places. They're all, everybody is speculating right now. Even the Fed doesn't really know. Jerome Powell came out the other day and said, well, in hindsight, it looks like we acted a little too slowly in our fight with inflation. Guess what? It doesn't take a genius to know that. We, people like me have been saying, for six, seven months that you need to deal with this, you need to get ahead of it. And they were just sitting here saying inflation was transitory. So even the leading economists have no clue what they're doing right now. You have to just, I, let, let me put it to you this way. This is the way I look at these things. What's the upside? What's the downside? And can I live with the downside? And so when you look at it from that lens or through that lens, if you make your decision in times like this, you want to mitigate your downside because the bottom line is we're, it, the world is full of uncertainty. And anytime you move and you take risk off the table, you're, you are going to lose some upside, but you also eliminate that downside. You know what I mean? And so if you can, it, you have to figure out what is worse to you, losing a ton of money or losing out on some opportunity. And I know for most Americans right now, losing out on a little opportunity and gaining the peace of mind, knowing that you're not going to take a huge dive with the economy if it tanks, that is peace of mind. And so making sure right now, number four is making sure your money is in a safe, liquid, accessible account that you can take advantage of opportunity and the money that you have that's in 401ks, IRAs that you can't touch for anything else. I would even say move that to safety, put it in a money market account, put it in, in, in some other safe fund and wait for the market to settle down a little bit. So the fifth thing is to be prepared to capitalize on opportunity. And the reason I put this as the fifth thing is because A, you're not gonna be able to do that and capitalize and be prepared unless you do all these things in order. Because A, you gotta get your money in line, you gotta get your head in mind, you gotta get your heart in line, right? You, you need to be prepared emotionally. And what happens is people, human behavior is what drives more investment mistakes than ever before. And, and Warren Buffett always says, do the opposite of what other people do to be successful. So when other people are, are, are buying and freaking out or whatever and, and, and holding and just doing all these things, move your money to cash and just keep it safe. And as they're now finally reacting after the fact, as the market starts to come back up, you didn't lose. So now you're going to be sitting there and waiting for opportunity. And the bottom line is that I talk about this in my life 180 pyramid video. If you can be structured and positioned, ready to take advantage and capitalize on that opportunity when it comes, what happens is it's the pendulum effect, right? So the, the pendulum swing way too far over to the side. And what's going to happen is when the market corrects, it should just go back to the middle, but it never does. It never, ever, ever does. It always overcorrects. And so being able to be prepared, sitting on this side of the pendulum with cash, having liquid accessible control, controllable access to big amounts of money, having your credit dialed in so you could take advantage when everybody else's credit is destroyed, when foreclosures go up, when unemployment rates go up, when all these things happen, because guess what? That is coming. And as opportunity goes down for the people on this side, the people who are prepared 
are going to capitalize and take advantage of it. And so those are the five things that I think every single person needs to do. If you have any questions about any of this, feel free go down in the link below. I've got a team of people that are happy to coach you, happy to give you some guidance. You could just set up your free clarity call. No harm, no foul, no pressure on anything. Um, I hope you found this valuable and I hope uh, for your sake that you, you figure out the best situation, the best setup for you. And uh, that's it for today. So if you haven't already, make sure you subscribe, hit the bell that we get notified every single time I launch a new video, which is every single day. And uh, if you haven't yet, go check me out on TikTok as well, at Real Chris Kirkpatrick, doing a lot of cool videos over there as well, as well as the short content here. Make sure you go check that out. And that's it. Till next video, have a blessed, inspirational day. We'll talk soon. See ya.